Just a heads up, the Razzball Baseball Podcast might not be for all audiences. You have been advised. Hi, it's Nick. It's the last podcast before opening day, so let's give you some material to hold over us for the entire season. It's the Razzball Prediction Show. We've got underwear model and Razzball writer T-Hole joining us today to give us his predictions for 2013. T-Hole, what kind of name is that? Is that like teabagging your... Yeah, uh, never mind. Also, I'm going to have fellow Montrealer Jonah Carey of Grantland.com on, and we're going to discuss why our women are hotter, our food is better, our strippers are sexier, and yet we've all left. Okay, just kidding. As much as I'm sure you're interested in Canadian politics, we'll keep it to team win over under for 2013. Well, that and also maybe strippers. We're also going to go through some of our writers' predictions for 2013, so you can mock them in the comments section at Razball.com. And the RazballDraftKings.com contest details are finally revealed. Don't forget, you can always interact with the podcast by tweeting me, at Nick Capozzi, N-I-C-K-C-A-P-O-Z-Z-I. All that plus Gray Albright and Rudy Gamble. Maybe, we hope. I mean, I really hope we got this phone thing figured out today. Right? Right? It's the Razball Podcast for the week of March the 25th, 2013. Here we go. Podcast. All right, we've got LT on the line, also known as T Hole Bedek. You can follow him at T Hole Bedek 47. That's T E H O L B E D D I C T 47 on Twitter. I'm not even going to go there with the name T Hole. <laughs> hey, let me ask you something. How do you manage the demands of being an underwear model and also a Razzball blogger at the same time? It's tough, but. Uh... I don't know, with the the mass amount of traveling I do, I'm able to, whether it's in the hotel, on the airplane, I just am able to get it done, but it's it's a rough life, and uh, I don't know, I'm I'm blessed to be able to do both. You really are an underwear model, I'm not joking about that, that's your day job, right? It is, it is, it is, I'm on a shoot right now in uh, Hollywood. I'm I'm glad that that your side job is hanging out with us baseball geeks, blogging away at Razzball.com, that's fantastic. Do you and Gray ever get in cat fights over which one of you is prettier? Uh, no, I th- he knows. Gray is one of the most beautiful men I've ever seen, laid eyes on, and uh, so we've kind of established that upon our first meeting. He let he kind of established himself as the top dog. So I, I just kind of uh, same as in fantasy baseball. I just kind of. I bow down to him. You're just happy to be the beta in that relationship. Yeah. Okay, listen, it is our prediction show this week, so what we're going to do, I'm going to ask you who your rookie of the year is to start off. Uh, well, my, for my rookie of the year, I was going to go with uh, Profar on the uh, Texas. I was just worried about him getting in the lineup daily, and I know he still hasn't officially been dropped down yet. Uh, I think it's going to happen, but I'm I'm hoping they can somehow squeeze him in because if he plays... If he's able to start, you know, 100, 122 games or so, I think he easily wins uh, at least American League Rookie of the Year. And, I mean, for fantasy-wise, he's uh, steals. He's got a little bit of power. The average is good. I mean, it's all there. He is my guy. Uh, I, I drafted him in some leagues trying to get him in at second, possibly, or the second base shortstop spot. Right. Okay, let me ask you another question. If you're on this underwear shoot, are there any uh, lady underwear models around there? Uh, no, it's mostly for... Uh, our target audience is mostly gay men, so it's usually just a bunch of dudes hanging out. I'm not going to go there. Who's your Cy Young candidate for fantasy this year? Um, fantasy, the, 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 something I did yesterday. I took I took you Darvish in one of the Razzball RCL leagues over. 
I took them over a bunch of bunch of dudes, and they were they were all clowning me and making fun of me and saying, "Aren't you a writer on Razzball and you're doing this?" And like, but I think you Darvish, you Darvish could be that dude. Like, I think he could be a top top five pitcher. You know, possibly. You know, top three, top two, Cy, Cy Young, fantasy. I give it to him. He's my. Otherwise, I'm going Felix Hernandez. I think they got a little bit of extra offense this year. This could be a year where he wins 21 games or so. All right, who's your MVP? Um, MVP. I had. Oh uh, yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't turn my back on my boy Mike Trout last year. He dominated for me so hard. I've never I've never seen anything like that. I had to go with him. He's my boy. He's I would have taken him unquestionably at number one overall without hesitation. Like overall points leagues, any kind of league, I mean he just does it all. You got I gotta go with him. No question. All right. Who's your bust in twenty thirteen? Oh my bust. That's right. I had a couple guys on there, you know, I had uh Mike Napoli, the whole I mean, I don't know. He's not going that high anyway, but, I mean, the whole – a bunch of these injuries are kind of scaring me away with a bunch of players. But for Napoli, like the hip thing, I owned him last year. That was a joke. I mean, that was devastating. Um, let's see, Pujols, his kind of weird injuries are kind of scaring me when they said he's wobbling around, running down the first baseline. But he looks like he's hitting, and he, he should be fine. I'm not going to call him a straight bust, but, I mean, I'm not drafting him in the first round anywhere. So I, I think he bounces back. All right, fair enough. And who's your out of nowhere candidate this year? I like. Well, D- Dominic Brown has been my guy forever, but he's been talked about so much now that I can't really call him that. I mean, hopefully the manager stops being an idiot and just gives him the the job because it's a joke. I mean, I don't understand what's going on there. But then Lorenzo Kane for the Kansas City Royals. He's got power. He's got speed. I mean, not a ton of power, but I mean. I put a cap on it at about 20 homers. He could steal 20, 25 bases, should hit for a decent average. He was a, a major prospect. He's coming up and he's got the starting job. So he, he's he got the potential to be a nice little overall overall player. And that's, that's my choice. All right. I'm going to make a bold statement right now, LT. I don't think there's any better fantasy advice you're going to get on the planet from an underwear model, male or female. All right, thanks for joining us today, Sleepy Pants. No problem, thank you. That's what we said earlier this year when we were drunk and now we're sober. Okay, it's the preseason predictions from the Razball crew. Hey, Kyle, do me a favor. Just for this segment, even though no one wants it, throw some beats down for me. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to take you through our writers, and they've all predicted a Rookie of the Year, Cy Young winner, MVP, Fantasy bust and fantasy out of nowhere player. Let's start with JB at JB Gilpin on Twitter. His rookie of the year is Oscar Tavares of the Cardinals. Cy Young, he likes Cole Hamels of Philadelphia. His MVP pick, this is kind of out there, is Paul Konerko. But JB says, look, you can't say a 30 homer, 300 season is too much of a shock. He did it two straight years before 2012. So I think he's looking at that more MVP based on where he was drafted. Fantasy bust, he's got Paul Goldschmidt. A lot of hype, I see that. And out of nowhere player, he's going Jason Kubel. I don't know if I agree with that. The guy is a candidate to hit 25 to 30 homers. But nonetheless. Next up, Chris Smith at Fantasy Guru underscore CS9. Rookie, he's got Adam Eaton. I don't know if he's factored in the injury or not, but a lot of buzz around Adam Eaton this year. Cy Young, Kershaw, can't argue. MVP, Votto, can't argue. Fantasy bust, Adrian Beltre, that's interesting. And fantasy out-of-nowhere player, he's got Juan Segura. And all I need to know is that I pronounce that correctly. Next up, Tom Jacks, at Vote Tom Jacks. Rookie, Adam Eaton, even with the missed time, has a power-speed combo worth fawning over. Cy Young, he likes R.A. Dickey. And this is the best argument I've heard for Dickey this year. Regression isn't inevitable. MVP, he's got Corey Hart, and he actually wrote a post, if you look him up on Razball.com, where he says that Corey Hart is a late-round alternative to Alan Craig, and speaking of which, Craig is his bust. Out of nowhere, he's got Ichiro. Here's the argument. He batted 322 with five homers, 14 steals, in 67 games 
with the pinstripes last year. Prospect Whisperer Scott at R underscore Scott E has Tavares as his rookie. High praise coming from Scott. By the way, if you're in a dynasty or keeper league, you need to follow Scott. Again, R underscore Scott E. Cy Young, Kershaw, MVP, Miggy, Bust, Jay Bruce, and out of nowhere, this is out of nowhere, Ronnie Cedeno. Hey, Kyle, speaking of music, every time we talk about Smokey, we got to figure out how to get hits by the bong by Cypress Hill played, okay? Just tweet, be real, make it happen. Smokey at Smokey McPotts. Rookie Aaron Hicks just won the starting center fielder job in Minnesota. Cy Young, Strasburg, no surprise. MVP Robinson Cano. Fantasy bust Joey Votto. Out of nowhere, Brandon Belt. J Wrong at J Wrong. Rookie, he's got Jerko. Cy Young, he's got you Darvish. MVP is Bruce Harper. That's interesting. Fantasy bust is Robinson Cano. I don't know where Will Venable, and I like that one because with the fences being brought in in San Diego, I wonder if his home runs can catch up to his steals. Also, Jay Wrong made a Jennifer Lawrence gif, and it's awesome. Tweet that shit out, my man. Sky Seymour, what are you doing on the baseball side? You're the football guy. At Sky underscore Rasball, his rookie of the year. He's thinking everyone's going Jerko, so he's going Arenado out of Colorado. His Cy Young is Strasburg. Making the point, got to get those Cy Youngs out of the way before he goes all in to come on us. MVP, hard to argue with Miguel Cabrera's consistency. Fantasy bust. He's assuming everyone's going for Posey, so he's going to say Adrian Beltre. But I'm starting to think that because everyone is down on Buster Posey, maybe there's some value there now. I'll have to take a look at that. His out of nowhere player is Matt Adams. He thinks with the brittle St. Louis outfield and Alan Craig, it might not take much for Adams to check in with a 30 home run pace. And here's my predictions, Nick at Nick Capozzi. I'm going for deep home runs here. Rookie of the year, I like Billy Hamilton. I think contending Cincinnati is going to have that need for speed. Cy Young, I'm going Adam Wainwright. I think he's far enough removed from Tommy John surgery to make an impact. My MVP, if the stars are aligned, is going to be Evan Longoria. My bust, McCutcheon, based strictly on where he's being drafted. I think he's still a top talent, but I think he's going too high this year. I'm looking for regression there. And my out of nowhere is Everett Cabrera. He's a career 292 hitter in the minors. I say he hits 280 this year, swipes 50 bags on a surprising Padres team. The Daily Fantasy Fantasy Sports Report. Brought to you by DraftKings.com. You can follow them at DraftKings on Twitter. Okay, so there's three things going on at DraftKings.com that you absolutely want to know about. First is the $20,000 opening day contest. It's happening on Monday, April the 1st. There's 1,400 spots available. It sounds like a lot, but it isn't because they're going to get booked up fast. So reserve your spot right now. It's only 16 bucks to enter. The top 250 players get paid with 5Gs going to the first place winner. So I'm going to put my my own money where my mouth is. I'll be in on that contest. You can kick my ass on the leaderboard. I'll be there under Podcast Kings. The winner of that contest is also going to get a free entry into this next contest. Are you ready for this one? This one's big. It's the $150,000 walk-off contest, which happens on April the 12th. It's got 825 available slots at a $200 entry fee per person, with the top 100 finishers getting paid, including $50,000 to first place, $20,000 to second, and $10,000 to third. Now, this is really important. There's a ton of qualifiers to win spots in the $150,000 walk-off contest. Just go to DraftKings.com and click the promo events icon for all the details. The third contest is the one you want to know about, especially right now because it's only open to Razzball readers. It's Play with Rudy from Razzball, and it starts on April 2nd. It's just 5 bucks to enter. Only 50 people can enter. First place is going to win a ticket into the $150,000 walk-off contest. So that's a $200 value and a chance to win the 50 k Second to 10th place is going to win 10 bucks. 11th to 20th is going to win 5 bucks. So DraftKings.com, because they love us so much, they're actually going to be guaranteed to lose money on this contest, but they really want to get the Razzball listeners involved so they can have a good time and enjoy the experience. You're going to be able to access that contest through a unique link on Razzball.com. And Rudy and myself are going to participate. And again, we're going to be throwing our own money into that. So hopefully you can come and kick our butts. But maybe with a little luck, we'll kick your butts. So don't forget again, twenty grand on opening day. That's April 1st. The $150,000 walk-off contest. That's April 12th. And starting April 2nd, 
is play with Rudy from Rasball. And I don't know, where's the Rudy and Nick from Rasball? What's going on with this? The Rasball Podcast. It's a pleasure to be joined by Jonah Carey of Grantland.com. Thanks for taking some time out for Rasball Nation today, Jonah. Thanks for having me, Nick. All right, listen, quick question off the bat, because it's so rare I get to interact with a fellow ex-Montrealer. Agree or disagree with this statement? Montreal is the greatest city in North America for about two months a year. Sure, that sounds right. It's wonderful in the summertime, maybe three months a year, but I think that's pretty accurate. The weather's pretty crummy a lot of the time. Yeah, absolutely. But it's a great place to uh, to visit. Okay, so Jonah, we want to have you on today because no one's as plugged in as you when it comes to team win over under totals. So we're looking for some value today. Um, I might throw a couple out at you and maybe you can throw some back. First one I'm looking at is the Arizona Diamondbacks at 81 and a half. I like a lot of the moves they did in the off season. I think there's some room to move up there. What are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, they're a pretty balanced team. They don't really have so many superstars, but uh, they have a lot of you know, pretty good players. They, they completely recast the roster over the off season. They got rid of Justin Upton. They got rid of uh, Trevor Bauer. They did a bunch of things. Not crazy about the long-term implications of all that, but short of term, I think it should be all right. Nick Prado, uh, Martin Prado is fine. Uh, Cody Ross, assuming that he's healthy, should be okay. So, they're in pretty good shape. The big thing that I look at is they were 15 and 27 in one run games last year. And, uh, you know, just by luck of the draw, that was probably going to regulate based on their expected win loss record last year, assuming that they finished, you know, roughly 500 in those one run games. They would have won 86 games instead. They only won 81. So my contention was if the Diamondbacks had done nothing, they probably would have won more games this year than last anyway. Uh, they went ahead and did some major moves. I don't know how that's going to work out long term, like I said, but I think that. You know, by pure regression, they might end up winning a few more games. Okay. What about the Houston Astros at 59 and a half? This looks like a team that could be terrible. I mean, really bad, historically bad. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's a tough one because it's high variance. You know, that still means that if it's 59, they have to lose 104 games to go under. And that's, that's a heck of a lot. It's hard to say. You know, they could run into some good performances. They picked up a guy like Chris Carter. He might hit 30, 35 home runs this year in his first full-time job, they had some other young players who, who knows, they could break out a little bit. So it's tough. I mean, I could see it. They could certainly lose more games than that, but it just it made me a little bit of nervous one way or the other. Fair enough. What about the Dodgers at 90 wins? Well, I had the Dodgers at 91 and a half, and that was the one that I actually placed money on. I was in Vegas uh, last weekend or the weekend before and went through a long list, and you can find the article at grandland.com, went through a long list of possibilities and uh, what about a bunch of teams that were sort of maybes? I could see it one way or another. But the, with the Dodgers, yeah, I don't think they're going to win 92 games. But I don't think they're a bad team. They have a chance to make the playoffs. And if they do make the playoffs, you know, with Crenshaw, with uh, Kershaw and with Kemp, and uh, if Granke's healthy at that point, that could be something. But right now, Hanley's out, Granke's out, Crawford's out. They're, they're just really depleted, and I think it's going to hurt their regular season win total. But, look, if I'm a Dodgers fan – I'm not that discouraged. Last year, I faded the, the Tigers during the regular season. I bet the under on 93 and a half wins. I didn't think they were going to be bad. I just didn't think they'd win 94 games. But I thought they could win the division and, and still maybe even go to the World Series. That's exactly what happened. They won 88 games. They won the division. They went to the World Series. Not out of the question we could see things like that for the Dodgers. I don't know if they passed the Giants in the standings, but they could make the playoffs win, you know, 88, 89, 90 games. You win the bet, and they still have a chance to do something interesting in the playoffs. All right, last one that stood out to me was the Texas Rangers at 87 wins, and I didn't know how I I felt about that one. I think there's a chance of regression there, but maybe 87's right on. What do you think? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I mean, they they did lose some talent over the offseason, but, I mean, Michael Young is a non-loss. He was way past his prime. I guess Josh Hamilton was sort of the big one. They do have some good young talent coming onto the roster. Jordan Profar won't be up right away, but he'll help the team at some point during the season. Uh, You know, I like you, Darvish, in his second complete major league season to maybe put up a even bigger numbers than he did last year. I think he could be a Cy Young contender. They do have some talent up there. It's going to depend, I think, in large part on the starting pitching, how fast can Colby Lewis come back. They'll get Nathalie Feliz back at some point to bolster the bullpen. When's that going to be? Like you said, I think the number's about right. There are a bunch of variables that could take them to 90, but I could also see 84 or 85. Okay. Is there anything that I'm missing where you saw great value this year? Yeah, the Yankees. I mean, the Yankees, when people, uh, when the odds first came out, they were at about 90 wins. I mean, that was tremendous opportunity at the time and uh, it's gone down to about 86 and a half now it might even go lower on the DL to start the season you've got Alex Rodriguez Mark Teixeira Michael Pineda Curtis Granderson Derek Jeter and Phil Hughes that's a bigger payroll than half the league just on the DL with those six guys it's, right 
it's frightening and terrible. They just traded for Vernon Wells, which tells you everything you need to know about their level of desperation. I don't think this is going to be a great team at all. I might live to regret not betting on the Yankees. I was actually in Vegas. I was getting ready to board to get on a plane, but I was, my plane got delayed. Spent some time in the casino just kind of working and sitting it out and then saw the Teixeira news come out that his injury was more serious than first reported. Ran down to the casino, ran down to the sports book and had my money out, and the line had gone from 87 to, I think it was 86 and a half. And I don't know why, but it just made me chicken out that half, half a win. I'd already put my normal allotment of money on the Dodgers, so it would have been extra bet. Right. But, uh, yeah, there's a case to be made that the Yankees could really struggle this year and maybe even be a 500-ish team. All right. Now, also, I know you play a lot of fantasy. Just off the top of your head, any uh, surprising candidates, maybe a couple outliers that, uh, that most people aren't looking at where, you see, where you're seeing value this year? Uh, my job isn't until tomorrow. I've been doing some preliminary research on a few guys. I like some of the Cardinals' young arms. I think that Shelby Miller and Trevor, Trevor Rosenthal, one or both of those guys could be values, and they're going to cost, you know, a buck or two if you're in an option or be a very late-round draft. Like, if you're in a standard 10 or 12-team mix, they're probably not even getting drafted. I like those guys very much. Well, I think Billy Hamilton, I think some of these guys that are going to go start the year in the minor leagues, you weigh the pluses and minuses. But if you're in a shallow enough league, you can roster, you know, some guy, a shortstop, start the season, but make sure that you have Hamilton on your roster, and then if he comes up, he could just be dynamite. If he plays half the season, he might steal 35 bases, which is huge if you play 80 games. Someone like that, Will Myers is the same concept, Oscar Tavares is the same concept. That's definitely going to be a strategy of mine. If I can get these guys for, I'm in an auction, 18-team mix, if I can get these guys for a buck or two, I'm going to do it, and then in the reserve rounds, I'll pick up somebody, you know, to cover the position who's half confident with the hope that those other guys can come up. I'm really looking at uh, some of those young players being a big boon. I don't necessarily expect it to be on the level of Trout and Harper like it was in 2012, but that doesn't mean that they can't be valuable and worth way more than a dollar or two by the time the season ends. Right, absolutely. Now, I ask this strictly as a Montreal baseball widower. When's the Expos book coming out? About a year from now. Uh, we're working on the writing right now. The reporting is more or less wrapped up. I've talked to virtually everybody that I could possibly want to talk to, which is good. And now it's just a matter of cranking out chapters, uh, which I should be doing in the next few months, with the hope of getting it done, you know, mid to late summer, and uh, the publisher has a few months to uh, get it in shape, and then it'll come out probably March or April of next year is what we're looking at. All right, and I know this is a long-term thing, but anything else on the horizon after that? Oh, I don't plan on doing any more books, well, hopefully ever, but it's not certainly not in the near future. The Expos book, even after the last one, I wrote that book called The Extra 2% on the Rays, a couple of years ago, which is sort of a money ballish style book. And I encourage people to check it out. I think it went pretty well and you'll probably dig it. But after that, I was, you know, I told my publisher I was more or less done. He said, hey, what about an Expos book? And I said, all right, fine, because I love the Expos and I grew up with the Expos. But, uh, you know, they'd have to back up a Brinks truck worth of money to get me interested in this that, at that point, I think, after this one. So uh, very happy with my day job at Grandland.com. Keeps me very busy. Got a couple pieces out today that I encourage people to check out and, uh, yeah, I think that that is on my future horizon. So. Absolutely. I will go and check those out at grantland.com right now. Thanks so much for joining us today, Jonah. Thanks, Nick. The Razzball Podcast. All right, and now it is an absolute pleasure to be joined for the first time all year at the same time. We've got Rudy Gamble and Gray Albright on the phone. Just because it's the first time, let me say first hello to Rudy. How's it going? I made it this week. And now let me say hello to Gray. Why do you say hello to Rudy first? <laughs> What's up, guys? How are you? What's going on here? It's, it's fro before stash, yeah. man. All right. Well, we're, we're doing great. We've already had a great show. We've had uh, LT on. We've had Jonah Carey from Grantland.com on. All right. What we're going to do, gentlemen, because this is our predictions podcast, again, the first podcast before the opening day, which is this Sunday with uh, Texas and Houston. That's going to be an amazing game. It's, uh, oh, that's going to be like I'm huge, so and, huge in Austin. Houston and Texas Sunday night. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to say don't go with Bud Norris. That, that I'm going to. That's my first <laughs> prediction. The stream meter is going to yeah. say, yeah, don't start, don't start Bud Norris against Texas. All I know is the streaminator better be ready. <laughs> and don't start Terry Holland anywhere. No, why do you hate Holland so much? You're like you're like a you're like a Belgian. I don't like Holland. I don't, you're not gonna like him either after owning him. You're like a Walloon or Flemish. I forget which one hates the Dutch. All right. Well, listen. Thanks for the uh, the global uh, politics view. Let's get right into this. I want to start with your fantasy rookie of the years. You know what, Rudy? Let's start with you. Who's your rookie of the year for 2013? I'm not loving I'm not loving the rookies this year. I'll be honest. Um, no rookie rookie. I liked I like Trout. I like Trout and Harper a lot last year. Uh, I'm going with Arenado 
If if you if Myers or Tavares broke camp, I'd take one of those ahead of Arenado. I still think Arenado doesn't come up until late May, early June. But he has a easier he has an easier path. Chris Nelson and uh, Pacheco are pretty good hitters. They can't field for crap, and there is nothing worse than a bad field and third baseman to demoralize your team. So I'm seeing Arenado. I think it'll be a good year, but nothing, nothing too fantastic. Maybe like 15 to 20 homers in like a two-thirds season. What about you, Gray? Who you like this year? Uh, I like the. Uh, I don't like any of them. <laughs> really, I'm I'm with Rudy. It's a it's a bad year for rookies. I. Uh, it looks like the earth is taking a deep, long breath after uh, Mike Trout and Bryce Harper, whereas uh, that's what Al Gore would say. I don't, I don't know if he would say that. <laughs> I'm not sure why he would say it. Either. It would, it would take him uh, like more PowerPoint slides to get that across. <laughs> <laughs> right, much more succinct and less PowerPointy. Uh, I'll say, uh, Will. I'll say Will Myers, just because uh, I don't really like any of the rookies, and I think. Uh, when he comes up in June, he's going to do well, and in two thirds of a season, he's going to have a better year than anyone who's having a, a full year. Aaron Hicks looks—he doesn't look terrible, but he doesn't he doesn't seem like he has much power. So it's not usually uh, the way voters are going to go. And uh, it's hard to get. Ex- I'm with you. It's hard to get excited about Aaron Hicks when it's kind of like you look at him like, yeah, you might be Drew Stubbs. And I could get Drew Stubbs if I really wanted to, but I don't. Well, that's a fair point. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Drew Stubbs probably has a little bit more power as well. All right. Uh, Rudy, give me your fantasy bust of 2013. So I'm going to go with Jose Reyes. Uh, here's, here's why. He's 30 years old. He's got a lot of miles on those legs. He's had major leg issues over the years, hamstrings and stuff like that. Now he's going to play all his home games on artificial turf. He likes, he, he's a good fastball hitter. Now he's going to the league where they throw a lot more breaking pitches. Um, I, I'm not drafting him anywhere, and I've been kind of pushing not for Razzle Rears not to draft him because I think his upside's like 30 stolen bases with you know good average, good runs, things like that. But it's not a huge upside, and the downside he's playing less than 100 games. I think I think right now if if I was in Vegas, I'd take a, a parlay on him and Tulo and and see how much odds they'd give me to bet on less than 200 games. Interesting. What about you, Gray? Who are you down on this year? Uh, in the non-sexual way, I'd say Buster Posey. I think he's... No! Point. Yeah. And uh, I, I actually really want him to fail, too, because Rudy just drafted him, so... <laughs> I have even more... I'm, I'm more pot committed on Buster Posey failing this year than ever. Yeah. You could say I told you so when he when he if and when he does. Well, we discussed this last week. I mean, Buster Posey, all things being equal, if you took him in the fourth round, you'd probably be happy with that, right? Uh, I, I'm still. I mean, I've just got to add you to on drafting a catcher there, but I, I feel pretty comfortable with it. It was a third round pick. It wasn't like a second round pick. Okay, position aside, just based on his batting statistics that you're projecting 2013, where does he fit? Oh, if he was like a if he was like first base or outfielder, yeah. That probably knocks him back like two rounds. So fifth. I think I think catchers generally. I I think they end up getting in my dollar thing about it ends up being about two rounds they move up. You know, one catcher league. Yeah, if you look, I mean, you just look at his stats. He's twenty five homer, uh, hundred RBI, eighty five runs, uh, three good average. Average. That's about Billy Butler. So where would you draft Billy Butler? Probably yeah, the fourth fifth or fifth. Fourth round. That's the only thing I'm trying to point out. Yeah, I, I think I got good value. It's just I took on a little more risk. See, I don't, I don't think. Well, listen, in the third round, I think he's being overdrafted. But if I caught him in the fourth round plus, I don't have to think about catcher. I don't know. Yeah, but just, just the, keep uh, Scott think, Cousins uh, away from I took, him. Uh, I think G- Jesus Montero went in the twenty-second uh, round in the same draft. He uh, so if he hits two eighty and eighteen homers. That's really that huge of a difference between him and Buster Posey. Oh, no, there's going to be a thirty a RBI difference. difference. There's going to be there's there's going to be a big difference. There's going to between Posey is going to be better than Montero in every stat. Ooh, controversy. Yeah, but not the difference. Not the difference of twenty two rounds. Though. 
I also the uh, it, that, it's a, it's, a, it's fair that, that that's one of the reasons why I would generally say punt catching because you get good late round value because no one will take a catcher as their utility at least if you're in a a decent league where everyone shows up at the draft. Uh, let's let's go back to having separate calls. I can't take Rudy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg, give me your out of nowhere player for 2013. Who's going to come out? unexpectedly and shock the fantasy baseball world? Uh, well, I think it depends on how you're defining out of nowhere. Uh, for the majority of people drafting, I don't think they're taking Todd Frazier or Josh Rutledge anywhere near where I have them ranked. So for me, they're not out of nowhere, but I think for the majority of people, no one's really. Uh, I think ESPN has Rutledge at, at uh, maybe 200 and. 20 or something ranked that's pretty out of nowhere if he does anything like i expect him to do no that's what i'm looking for so what do you forecast for rutledge this year uh rutledge i like uh he's looking at a 17 17 playing every day yeah yeah playing every day uh good power uh good speed decent average uh nice on um, runs and RBIs, depending on where he goes in the order. He looks like he's going to be in the top of the order. So, I don't know. It will, uh, he has great eligibility. I'm, look, I'm, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying Rutledge so far, and the game's haven't started yet. All right, Kyle, when you uh, come back with the coffee for LT, grab a coffee for Gray, too. Rudy, who's your out of nowhere for 20th? I'm, go- I'm going a little bit deeper on the ADP. Gray is correct that, yeah, Rutledge seems to have a really low ADP, but we, we seem to see him drafted at least in our leagues, you know, in the 10th round around there. Uh, Chris Carter is my uh, X-Filer or X-Factor or whatever. Huh. He, um, I like the power. He, he's he's going to play in Houston. He's going to be first base outfield, and I, lo- I, I just love having a first base outfielder on my roster. It gives me a little more flexibility during off days. Right. He's got huge power. He'll be an average train, but I, I see 250, 30 homer potential there. Yeah, that's fair, and the flexibility does help. I think he, could, I think he may, maybe gives you basically a trumbo year, and you probably take him about six, seven rounds later. Yeah, okay. He went, I think, last night in one auction I was in for $4, so definitely worth the risk. And doing, uh, doing a sequel to uh, the original movie and putting Tia, uh, Tia Leone back on the big screen. Finally. Wait, she's in that? I thought it. Uh, Mr. Tia Leone's in it. Oh, is it? Oh, no, wait. He's a sex addict. Wait, who's the, uh, who's the broad? P- pardon oh, me. Oh, Jillian Anderson. Pardon me, four girl listeners. Oh, Jillian, that's right. Jillian Anderson. Wow. I forgot. I like Tia Leone, though. Maybe we get her in the, uh, in the movie. She's, she's a big fan of baseball fan. Listen, we already had a male underwear model on today for our four female listeners. She, she, could, she could play the role of, like, you know, fantasy baseballer's wife and just be a big nag like she was in Spanglish. <laughs> oh, she was so awful in that movie. <laughs> oh, no. Family Man. Uh, most underrated movie ever. Let's get to the uh, big awards here. Give me your fantasy Cy Young winner this year, Gray. Uh, I still go with uh, Aroldis Chapman and hire a contract killer for Dusty. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I, uh, I'm going to say, uh, because nothing, I don't like anything to be too easy, I'm going to say Matt Moore. Interesting. Uh, I think the uh, Yankees look like, in 1986, when Bobby Meacham was their uh, lone all-star, and uh, the Red Sox don't look much better from last year, and last year they were pretty terrible. So uh, I'm going to say I'm going to go with an AL Easter and Matt Moore, 220 Ks, 20 plus wins. Wow, that's that's a statement. That's quite a statement. Yeah. I, I, well, it's an even bigger statement when I booyah at the end of it. How do you, how do you fit your balls in in the underwear? I mean, with with you know statements like that, you 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 just don't. You put them. You 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 tuck them to the side. Booyah! That's one of the things I asked LT. I mean, between Gray and LT, how do you guys decide uh, who's the pretty one? It's really tough. He's got a he's got a, he's a mankini model, I believe. So it's it's difficult. He has the uh, the love of all the women 
and and the men love me. Well, actually, it was interesting because he said his, the target audience that uh, he usually shoots for is is actually a male audience. So <laughs> really, oh wow, yeah, he's he's going into my turf. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're we're trying to reach that that lucrative Bravo slash fantasy baseball target, and we're the only ones trying for it. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're the official. We're going to be the official fantasy baseball site of people who read Men's Health. All right, Rudy, give me your Cy Young Award winner. Oh my, well, first I got to send Gray to Upside Addiction Camp. He just, <laughs> the drafts I let him run. He ends up with Aralis Chapman as our ace, and if not, then not more. I I like more as like a number two, number three guy. I like his K upside, but he walked like. Four guys an inning, or I'm sorry, four guys every nine innings last year. I don't. I, he, four guys an inning. That's ridiculous. That's like a run right there. Um, that's yeah. That's Volkos. <laughs> yeah, Volkos could do that. So, I mean, I like. I, I'm going with a, a more boring pick in Strasburg. I think. Um, you know, I think this is the year where he just goes crazy for strikeouts and gets more innings than last year. So I think he gets like the 180 innings and leads the league in K's, even though he, you know, there's guys pitching 40 more innings in him. Um, I think you'll look back and say that, wow, that was a crazy year for Strasburg. And after that, he starts kind of becoming a little bit more of a pitcher and not trying to strike guys out all the time. How, how many, what's the over under and how many years until Strasburg looks like Lincecum last year? That's what Sky said today. The writers are doing predictions for 2018. <laughs> we, have, we have the Bravo Fantasy 2018 niche. All right, Craig, give me your MVP for 2013. Uh, I have to go with my uh, <laughs> my uh, Nevio, Giancarlo. I think he hits 55 homers this year and maybe 65 RBIs. <laughs> uh, I think he'll, uh, yeah, no, I think he's going to get probably uh, around 120 RBIs, and the next best person on the Marlins is going to have maybe 40, seriously. he's. Uh, I, I, I like him to have his huge year. I think he's he's primed for it if he stays healthy. Um, in 20 years, we're going to look back on this season as being the season when Gray got the Giancarlo tramp stamp. You know, the only concern I have was your call last year was Pedro Alvarez, and I have Giancarlo on almost every team I own this year, so I am nervous. There's no didn't have Alvarez as the MVP. Pedro Alvarez. That was the year before. <laughs> last year, Pedro from Pittsburgh was calling in and having a great year. Come on, Nick. You were with us, man. All right, Rudy, who's your MVP? Um, well, I, I like I like Stan. That's definitely a guy that Gray and I both can agree on. Um, but not, but MVP probably not. I don't think he he doesn't steal bases really, and his average will you know be at best okay. I'm going with Trout. I know that there's um, yeah. I'm not going out on a huge limb there, but um, the thing that people are kind of harping on is that his power is unsustainable. Uh, that he's not going to be a 30 homer hitter. Um, even even I see him as a 20 homer, 60 stolen base guy who leads the league in runs, hits 300 plus. Uh, and for me, I'll take that over. Yeah, you know, I'd rather get cheap power at the end of the draft with a guy, you know, the Chris Carters and Berkmans and Ludwigs of the world than right. have to put anyone like Ben Revere on my team. So I, I'd rather have Trout's crazy stolen bases and great stats across the board than like than like the Miggies. Uh, awesome four category stats. All right, that's interesting. Okay, guys, listen, we got to wrap this up. So just give me ten seconds on this, Gray. Who's your World Series predictions? Rays and Braves. Fox will promote the series as DJ's coming, but who will get ahead? Turn up, Rudy. Who do you got in the World Series? I'm going to go with uh, Angels and Dodgers. I'll go with the LA series with. Uh, and I have no idea how they're going to promote it, but something involving the sociopath. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, everyone li- tuning into the Rasball podcast, remember you heard it here first on the Rasball Prediction Show. Gray Rudy, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. Talk to you next week.